Hey guys, this is Corey Nicole for Where's the Buzz TV, and I'm here today with Madeline Coughlin. How are you today? I'm great. I'm doing well. How about you? I'm great. So like, tell me a little bit about your day. Like, what did you do? How'd you start it? Today I started with a lot of cold brew um, <laughs> to, to get started, uh, which was nice. Um, I did, I did a little meditation, which I've been trying to do more to combat the cold brew, I think is, um, where we're at with that, Mm -hmm. um, had some breakfast and then, yeah. And now I'm, I'm here. Do you have like a favorite for breakfast? Is it like something that you eat every day or what do you usually eat? I'm a big toast person. So like with avocado too. I like an avocado toast. (laughs) I like, I like like a peanut butter banana, Mm -hmm. um, like a peanut butter and jelly old school. It depends on how I'm feeling, like savory sweet. Mm-hmm. And then like a lot of like mangoes, like a lot of just whole fruits um, that I, awesome. that I enjoy. That sounds really yeah. good, really healthy. I think I should definitely start your little <laughs> breakfast regimen because I don't even eat. It's, I mean, <laughs> it's good. What did, what do you eat? What's your, what's your go-to? I don't really eat breakfast. I'm more of a lunch person. That's why I'm like, I need to find something to like balance, but yes. <laughs> totally. I get it. I'm, yeah, I usually, I'm bad about lunch. I feel like I kind of like skip lunch, roll mm-hmm. right into to dinner and then I'm starving at dinner, which mm-hmm. is, you know, <laughs> oh. not ideal. <laughs> so, so like, how are you like feeling about your career? Like, what are you currently working on now? Um, right now I've been doing a lot of writing, mm-hmm. which is, is nice. I mean, especially just like being at home more the past, um, year or so and, uh, just getting to, to focus on, on writing. I, I just finished directing a short film. So I've been in the editing process of that, um, which is like a whole, a whole new arena for me, which is exciting, but also one of those things where it's like, okay, like, I, I appreciate the collaborators I have who are willing to explain things to me that I was unaware of. Mm-hmm. Um, like when we were first starting and my DP was asked me, he was like, so have you thought about aspect ratios? Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, I'm going to be honest. I don't know what that is. You're going to have to fill me in on that. So I love that you're true to that though. You're just like, I don't know. No, I don't <laughs> I feel like I I spent too much time like getting caught and like, oh yeah, I did see that movie mm-hmm. just instead of just admitting like, no, I didn't. I don't know what that is. Can you tell? And I feel like it, it makes it so much easier now to like, just be honest. <laughs> How many mm-hmm. short films are you writing right now? Um, well, right now I'm just editing this, this one. Um, and I'm working on more of like a long form, like a feature um, mm-hmm. writing wise, uh, which is nice. I'm trying to focus on like one thing at a time because I think I do get a little scattered uh with with like wanting to do a bunch of stuff so I'm like all right we're editing this then I can be writing this and kind of like in different stages of creation is that like how your process is like when you go about like you know um like editing or like making like a short films like do you have a specific like, like writing process or like how do you bring everything together yeah I I think my my process a lot of the time taps into something I'm afraid of, especially if I'm writing horror, like something that I hate thinking about, Mm -hmm. um, but find myself like weirdly drawn to, as I think we kind of are sometimes. Um, It's like, why does it scare me so much? And why do I keep like looping it in my head? Um, And I think that usually sort of, I was like, okay, well, can this be a story? Like, can I get it out? Um, maybe it's really just like my form of like getting like, it's like therapy, like getting out. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's, that's part of it. Um, I think if I'm writing more like comedy, um, I think in a weird way it, it is similar, um, in terms of like, just something that I'm kind of obsessing over lately that I can't stop thinking about, um, is usually my avenue for writing is like, all right, if I can't stop thinking about it and it won't leave my mind, then I guess I have to write it. (laughs) What was the inspiration um, behind the most recent like short film that you're writing? Um, I, I'm really into like outer space, aliens, that kind of stuff. Like, UFOs, think, all of that. Yeah, all of <laughs> that stuff. Is, real. I think it's real. <laughs> it's 100% agree entirely. Uh, and I, I find that stuff so, so fascinating. And so like, I find space, all of just the color scheme of that is so beautiful. Like, the Saturns and the the galaxies and the Milky, like all of those cosmos are so striking to me. And I I wanted to to kind of use that um, in a film. Like I was like, all right, I think I kind of maybe have direction with that visually. 
Um, and then I think I've always like loved um, Rosemary's Baby type like movies where I think there's like this slow burn horror. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that kind of those two combined, um, I, I was able to, to, to write this. So how, like, how long is, like, did it take you to write it? And like, what's like the plot? Like you tell us a little bit more like, about. Yeah, um, it, it, it was pretty quick. I also spent like a lot of quarantine writing these kind of nightmare bedtime stories, mm-hmm. which are like stories you wouldn't want to read before you go to bed. <laughs> that would be really unpleasant. Yeah. Um, so it stemmed from one of those too, um, is just kind of like writing, writing something that, that like really was, was frightening to think about. Um, but yeah, it's about a, it's about a girl who um, like has an experience in the woods um, and comes back to her apartment and she just feels something is different. Um, and we're kind of with her as she goes through the monotony of just being back home and like what you do alone. But again, like knowing and hearing her process that that something is off. Um, okay, so do you also draw like you think inspiration from other like projects you were already a part of as well? Do you think when you like start making like short films or is it truly just like, you know, like, you know, different like dreams or different stuff that you got? Yeah, I, d- I definitely, I think I draw from, from other projects for sure. Things, things that worked, um, mm-hmm. in, in others, um, things that, things that didn't work, but I, I, f- I figure I could do them better now that I know more. I'll add to the next piece I'm writing or the next, um, thing I'm, thing I'm working on. So I think they definitely influence each other. Um, and often sometimes I feel like there's like a nugget of idea that I don't mm-hmm. expand upon as much, maybe in one that I'm like, okay, great. This can be, it's, it's a whole new thing, like a two for one. Um, so it's all connected. Okay. <laughs> so do you do you have a preference? Like, do you think you prefer like writing, like being behind the scenes, or do you like being in front of the camera? Like, which do you feel like more comfortable, like more yourself? I I, I really enjoy both. They're both such different mindsets, which I was just thinking about today. Like, even just being here and like getting ready to be in front of the camera is a, a very different just okay, take us through it take us through it like what are your different headspaces so I think for when I'm in front I think a, a big piece is just like being present and there's weirdly I, I find like a little less prep the, the less preparation kind of the better mm-hmm. if I'm just like all right I know my lines and I know my character and I'll just go in and then like whatever is happening is kind of exciting and spontaneous between actors um and then also like just like I'm gonna look better than when I'm writing. Like when I'm writing, I'm just like, you know, maybe in my pajamas, like not like messy hair, like pacing around, just thinking and thinking and thinking in my head. Um, And I think that's like the thing that you never want to be when you're acting is like in your head, because that's when you start, things feel unnatural or Mm -hmm. you kind of- You put too much pressure on it. It kind of just throws off the whole- Exactly. So I think, yeah, it's this, this, it's very strange, but I, I do love both. Um, a pretty, pretty equally, depending on the day, depending on which one's being <laughs> on day. that day and more fulfilling. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> so that you, you starred in the, um, the film, We Burn Like This, that had its official debut at the film festival this month. So how did you feel about that? Like, were you nervous about a debuting or were you really excited? Yeah, it was, I, I was pretty excited. I think it hit me more when like it, it premiered at Santa Barbara first and a couple of my friends came up um, and they did like a drive-in movie theater. And I was so excited that like my friends were there and I was seeing them and to see like, you know, our director Alana again and everything. And then it just hit me that the movie is pretty heavy. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, we're all going to experience like kind <laughs> of something that's pretty dark and like uh, maybe the mood will, mood will, mood won't be the, won't be the same, but ultimately it was just really cool like connecting with with people after the movie and just I, I think I'm emotions just, however yeah. Oh, yeah and deprived of like in-person connections so hearing people like people coming up to me and like talking to me about it like that was that was awesome um it was really cool I mean that's the that's the dream is like getting to see it through um which we did so it was very exciting was this like a, a really challenging role for you or how would you like describe like being casted for this? Yeah, it, it was, it was pretty challenging. I think initially I was pretty scared because I was like, oh, she's so different than me. Um, but I think I was focusing on a lot of surface level characteristics like, oh, she like, 
she's a smoker and she like all these things that I wasn't, mm-hmm. that I was like, oh my gosh, am I going to be able to do it? <laughs> um, and, um, and then ultimately, like, as I spent more time just going through the script and kind of getting more into like the dark, deep parts of her, I, I found like, oh, this also scares me because I found the similarities between myself and the character. Um, and to go there to the places where, you know, like you self-doubt or you question your worth, like th- mm-hmm. those kind of things, I think were, were scary to kind of live in that for a bit, but hopefully I think made for um, a, a good character piece, um, even though it was a little uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. I feel like as an actor or as an actress, I feel like that's a good thing to have like an uncomfortable role because you really have to become like you have to adapt into them like you completely change you completely transition and I feel like that's when an actor truly earns like their chops like in the industry when they play something entirely different (laughs) than what they are yeah totally yeah so yeah yeah, definitely like when you're you just barely recognize them Mm -hmm. which I think is my my favorite like anytime I can be not Mm -hmm. like myself I'm in was the past role that you just did, was that like the moment you were like, yeah, I feel like this is like the most challenging like, role I've had? Or was there another role that you've had that you were like, no, this is, I really had to prepare for, really had to, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think up to that point, it was the mm-hmm. most challenging role I had done. And I think after that, I did uh, a Facebook watch show called Mira Mira, mm-hmm. where I play two characters, sort of. Um, like one of my, my initial character gets possessed. So I'm playing mm. that version of her as well. And I think that was, that was pretty challenging too. How and did just, you prepare for that role? Like, did you, do you have like an acting coach that you like met, that you met with or like, what did you do? I think it was, I mean, again, it was, I was, we filmed in Utah and there was a two week quarantine before we started mm-hmm. where I was alone in a hotel room. And mm-hmm. I was like, this is enough preparation right here. Like I was like seeing things and I was like, I didn't put my water there, like (laughs) really living the experience of it. So that, I think that helped a lot. Just being in a different place always helps me when we're filming somewhere that I'm not coming back to like my home Mm -hmm. um, with my stuff and my familiar things. And I'm like, okay, well, we're now we're, I don't recognize this. This is all different for me I think um I think that that was a big piece of it as well what do you think is the most important like lesson that you've learned so far in the industry like of so many experiences you've had already to be so young like do you feel that you you know what I mean like what is like the biggest takeaway that you've gained I think I think the the biggest lesson for me would be um not to wait for something to come your way. Um, I think writing has been such a save, saving grace for me, just like being able to create my s- stories that are in me um, and not, cause I just, I, I need it. I think if I was, if I was for me, like, I think if I was waiting around for like the next role, the next audition, the next job, I would be going crazier than I already am. And I was starting to, and I was like, I have to do something to, to, you know, get in there. Um, and I think that's been the best lesson I've learned so far is to just like, not wait for it to come to you to make it. How do you think the industry is adapting post like COVID? I know that we're not entirely out of the clear, but this is the beginning from like now when we're kind of like, you know, have vaccines and they're trying to like open up more productions. Like, how do you think about like the protocols and how do you foresee like the industry going from here? I think hopefully what I've seen in the past like year or so, I feel like there's been a a lot more humanity that has like leaked and seeped into the business, which I think I'm like, yes, like do it. Like sensitivity, like all of it. Like I I, understanding compassion. Exactly. Like let's talk, like let's. um, So that's, that's what I'm, I'm hopefully seeing more of and just like respect for, for people and in terms of how, how crucial it is for everyone who's a part of a show or movie or project to be healthy and to be there, um, I think was a big piece of what COVID taught us was like, there's already such a trust with everyone that you have to have when you're making something, let alone when it was, you know, COVID times and you're like, you're trusting these people to like, you know, get here to show up and we're all trying to keep each other safe. And so I think, I think just letting more of that um, like perpetuate the industry would be really fantastic. Um, 
is there, an idea for everyone. Is there any, any more like advice or anything that you would say, like if any of your fans are aspiring actors, like what is the best way for them to contact you or what would you like, like to say to them like during this interview if they're watching? Um, I think, I, I think advice would be like, don't be afraid of that thing in you that you're embarrassed by or that you think is weird or like strange. I think that's, that's like, that's the <laughs> embrace secret. Embrace yourself, embrace everything. Right. Like embrace, like, and like, especially that weird thing. Like the, the thing you think like, you're just like everyone else. I mean, mm-hmm. we don't need that. Like everyone has what, like that thing that you're like, oh, this is kind of strange. Like, I don't talk to a lot of people about this. I feel like that's the key. Like tap into that, like make something of that. Um, and that would, that would be, that would be my advice. If so what is that thing for you? What do you think that is for yourself? <sighs> so much. Um, <laughs> I think, I think probably, uh, fascination with m- the macabre and like, I don't want it, but I'm interested in it. Mm-hmm. Kind of like how people like love drama, but don't want drama in their life, but just like listening in on it. I think like, <laughs> like all sort of things, you know, like, ghosts all of that stuff that I I was like I don't really talk to people about this like that that has kind of been the kind of through line I think throughout the the work that I've done is like okay that's a little off Mm -hmm. (laughs) everything is like almost there but a little off (laughs) thank you thank you so much Madeline for joining us today I love like all of your work and we're like I'm pretty sure your fans and us that we're so excited to see what else that you have coming up and what you have in store Thanks so much for taking the time. No problem. So thank you again. I'm Corey Nicole for Where's the Best TV. I'm with Madeline Coughlin. And thank you guys. See you all next time. Where is the bus? Oh, yeah. Where is the bus? You said we with my